Today I'm looking at a very interesting property that's in between Belmont and Guarda, which is in the very centre of Portugal near the Serra de Estrela Mountains. Uh, the property is on the background here and before I start I just want to say a big thank you Mike for hiring us to, um, to have a look at this property. I've had a, I've had a look around, it's a really special place. Now obviously the weather today isn't the best, we've got uh, rain and all of that. It is winter and we are about 500 meters up in the mountains. Now I think I'm going to start your tour at these front gates over here, but this isn't actually the beginning of the property. The property actually begins um, just down here. So this entire section here on this terrace with a whole bunch of these olive trees belongs to the property. And then it sort of terraces up and then terraces up again to where you can see the main house. And the property itself actually extends. So from this concrete post, there's a wire fence and that extends up the mountain. So you actually will own these trees in the background here and all of these rocks. And it goes up about 1.6 hectares. So it's quite a lot of land, 16,000 square meters. Now you can probably tell it's raining at the moment. So I'm gonna try and get out of the rain and do the external part of the property a little bit later. Hopefully it won't be raining then. And actually, as we walk our way up, I just wanna point this out. This is um, basically a drainage uh, part here. So up on the top here, there's actually a water tank. And this water tank has this little drainage pipe over here. You can connect the pipe to it and it basically runs irrigation into this bottom uh, terrace here to irrigate trees or whatever you want to put down there. So that's quite handy. I didn't actually spot that the first time around. But as I said, we will come back and we will do the outside part and hopefully it won't be raining. So as we walk up, I want to point out that there is mains electricity on the property. Um, there is septic tank. So there isn't um, municipal sewage, but there's a septic tank on the property. And it's a good looking property, look at that. Double story, we've got a balcony along here, a balcony along here. We've got a separate big garage building over here. Nice big patio space out here. Another patio space out the side. Big garage space over here. But one of the reasons I wanna bring you here first is because it's got this over here. This is called a water mine. So it doesn't have municipal water. It gets its water from underneath the ground here, from a spring. And I don't know if you can see in there where this pipe is going. That's where it's collecting the water from. So it's kind of sealed off in there. Fresh spring water straight out the mountain that then goes into this over here, which I've heard is some kind of a filter. It's a sediment filter. So what it does is as the water arrives in there, it basically, let's see if I can put this down. All of the sediment and stuff will sink to the bottom and just the water will pass through there. So it's a very basic filter system, but bear in mind that this is a fresh mountain spring. And I've been told that it runs all year round and basically they have a system inside this garage here, which I'll show you in a bit, that basically creates water pressure and gives you pressure throughout all the taps and bathrooms and showers and things like that. So before we walk inside the house, I just wanna point out, they've got a little connection point over here for a gas bottle. On the other side of this wall is the kitchen. So, That'll do the gas for the kitchen and they also have some electricity points here if you want to plug things in. Because this is actually a very nice space for parking cars and things like that. You can fit quite a few there and you can obviously park them in the shade here underneath trees. All right, so um, let's work our way into the house. This is the big patio area outside. Um, we've got this nice little balcony up here, which I think is off one of the bedrooms. And we have some nice big windows. The windows are all double glazed and there's shutters. The shutters and the windows are all in very good condition. And they've also got ventilation. So it helps to ventilate things. If you do need to leave the house shut, you can secure it with the shutters and you can have one of the windows open so you get airflow, which is quite a nice touch. And here's the front door. We've got a little light out the front here. Front door is quite wide. It's a lot wider than a regular front door, which I guess is good for getting in furniture and things like that. And this takes us into the kitchen. So now this is used as a holiday house. So at the moment, um, obviously the owner's effects are, are here and everything, but the house has been all shut up. It's, um, I've opened up as many blinds and windows as I can, but as you can see, it's a little bit on the dark side. But yeah, we've got a very nice kitchen, a nice size. Lots and lots of cupboards. Lots of cupboard space. We've got the kitchen here. It's made out of granite with a granite worktop. Granite worktop going all the way around. 
The, the cupboards are a little bit old and dated, but they're still in good condition. There's nothing wrong with them at all. Uh, the sort of laminated wood. But yeah, everything seems to be totally functional and usable and still quite clean. And then we've got a space here for a double sink. I always like to have a double sink so you can rinse and wash up. And then we've got some really nice big windows that give us some views out to where the water mine is and also around here. Now, if it went so foggy, you could actually see a little bit of the mountains in the distance there. Maybe it'll clear up a little bit later. And if we carry on this way, we've got a dishwasher in here, so a full-size dishwasher. We have an electric oven over here, and we have a gas hob, and then we have the extractor, which is inside here. A bunch more cupboards and space for a huge fridge. I mean, this is already a bigger fridge than I'm used to seeing, and we've still got a lot of space on the side, so you could probably get one of those big American fridges in here. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then on this side, look at this, we have a really nice big fireplace. Really nice big glass pane in there as well, so you can see lots of the flames. Um, I'm not sure if this one has some kind of electric fan. A lot of these have like a fan that actually blows heat out. I'm not sure. I know it does have this on the side here, so it does have a radiator to let some of the heat out the sides. And perhaps it has one on the other side. Yes, it does. So I think this will help heat up this space really, really well. So I'm standing back by the kitchen window again, just looking out. I'm going to walk my way through. Um, let's go through here. So this is looking out that window again. Let's try and see if we can see some of these views. Uh, I don't know if you can make out the mountains in the background. This isn't actually the Cerro de Estrella. The Cerro de Estrella are just on that side there. But it's still beautiful mountain views, amazing rocks. Really, really nice. Okay, so if we carry on this way, let's see, they've got this big dining table in here. Where, I mean, you could fit uh, 10 people on here. That, that's a 10-seater table. Another big one in here. I mean, this room is, is pretty huge. So this is going to take us into the living room area. And I think before we go in there, let's just do, do this in order. So we have a bathroom over here. Let's open it up. We've got a bidet, the basin, the toilet. And uh, so, yeah, it's a toilet. It's not a bathroom. This also has a window leading out. And now we can get a, a gauge of how thick these walls are. I mean, look at that. This is the old part of the building. So there's an old stone part, uh, part of the building, which is the original building. And as you can see, really thick walls. And then there's a newer part that was added on. So yeah, all nice and functional. Work our way around. We've got a little storage space underneath the stairs here. And, you know, I'm not noticing any damp or anything like that on the walls, which is really impressive. A lot of these houses in Portugal have got damp. They've got mold and all sorts of stuff, and there's nothing here. It's actually in really good condition. So here we can see the staircase leading up, all granite. Uh, I think before we get there, let's go around this side. So. Um, this is like the living room. They've got a three-seater in here. It's a little bit dark on this side. I, I didn't open up this window yet. But as you can see, there's space for lots of stuff, a big TV and sofas and things like that. So, yeah. And over here is a nice little, what I would call a nook, where you could put some sofas and you've got this beautiful granite fireplace. Look at that. It's obviously in use and... Uh, Nice and big, beautiful, big granite stones. Look at these slabs. Lovely. I'd love to put a fire in there right now, actually. And standing here, now we can see up the staircase. So let's go around and go up these stairs. Really wide stairs. I'm very impressed by that. Plenty of space. And let me just show you what it looks like. So we've got nice tall ceilings and the old original granite stones of the house. And let me just stand in this corner over here and show you more. It's quite nice. A metal balustrade or banister. Is it called a balustrade or a banister? I'm not sure. And very wide. So you, you're, like, you're not going to have any problems getting big furniture and stuff upstairs, which is awesome. A nice big landing. And I think we're going to show them in order. So let's go to this one first. This is one of the bedrooms. So there's four bedrooms in this property. And as you can see, this one's got what looks like a king-size bed. So it's bigger than a double. 
they don't really have any other furniture in here so you can see like that but yeah there's there is a door the door does have a very big window on it but there isn't an actual separate window and let me just pop our noses out here quickly because we will be coming out here a little bit later but as you can see out here we have this sort of patio area it's it hasn't really been finished it's just in in concrete but uh, you know this is perfect for tiling up and this actually wraps around the back of the property gives you some of the views also to the back but we'll go there in a moment so it's not the greatest day to be doing property videos I'm a little bit worried about flying the drone because we do have rain that's just spitting down constantly but I'm hoping that it is going to pass uh, before I have to do that because well if not I'm going to go up there and try and give you as many views as possible so we've just come from this room and we're going to go into the second bedroom so this one here you can see all the nice exposed stones oh, I really love that I love those big granite stones again this is bigger than a double bed this is like a king size um, and if we look this side we've got those beautiful views look at that so from here there is I asked him about neighbors he said there's a neighbor over there I don't think anyone's living in this building um, and looks like someone's living up there and potentially someone's living over there but they all seem quite far away I can hear the nice sound of bells I'm thinking there's goats or sheep or something over there really cool all right looking back at the room nice minor space in here you know you've got space for the bed you definitely got space for some big wardrobes and chests of drawers and things like that bedside tables so it's a good it's a you know, it's a good space there are actually bigger rooms as well uh, now these rooms have this is their bathroom so this is an actual bathroom not just a, a toilet um, so we do have the toilet in here and we have the shower so we have the shower cubicle on the side here let's open it up so you can see it's a regular size shower cu a cubicle it's all in fairly good condition it's obviously a little bit dated but it seems quite clean and the bathroom is definitely functional and we have this little window here and here again you can see just how thick these walls are and that little window looking out the front and Here's a view looking down the stairwell and this nice big open space. I like that. And there actually is a little window in the back there as well. And if we work our way through, we've got another sort of landing area that could be used as another living space or something like that. And a couple more bedrooms off that. So we've got this one over here. Do you know that I actually didn't even go into this bedroom before? So this bedroom has... Um, some nice built-in cupboards, all made out of wood, and that hasn't been painted or anything like that. Obviously space for that king-size bed again, plenty of space in here. And look at that. Patio space. So looking out over the patio, we've got some lovely lemon trees, I mean lemon fruit. Wow, look at these lemons. They're actually really nice looking lemons as well. We've got some more citrus down there, some oranges. So this is actually a really nice little nook where you could put some chairs and tables and things out here all private and let's work our way around to the fourth and final bedroom which is just through here so again we have nice built-in wardrobes over here a really nice big bed as you can see really big bedside tables and let me stand in this corner over here and give you a view looking back really big room and we got these nice doors leading out I've noticed the bedrooms don't seem to have windows they just have doors but the doors themselves have nice big pieces of glass so they do kind of act like windows and I imagine at night time you could have those doors open and a lovely breeze blowing in in the summertime and you've got this really nice patio look at this so starting across here and going all the way down that is cool there actually is a window here the window leads into this bathroom and we will go into this bathroom now I'm at the bathroom door and let's see a nice big bathroom no bee down here we have the basin the toilet uh, lots of storage on the side it's all very clean and all very functional 
and a slightly bigger shower tray. That this one isn't a square; it's slightly bigger. And again, all you know, it's not brand new stuff, but it's it's very very clean. I'm not seeing any sort of dirt or mold or anything like that. And again, there's nothing in the bathroom here, so there's no like damp or anything like that. It's, I'm really impressed with that. Now there is something I did notice is underneath this table there's a big crack over here and there's some missing tiles and I was wondering what was going on and I asked the agent and apparently they were in the process of putting a bathtub in or they took a bathtub out. I can't, I don't really know if he was saying out or in. I'm thinking he might have taken them out because if you see there there's the hot and cold and this probably looks like where there was drain work or something. So I'm not sure, but either way, um, there is space here for a full-size bathtub. And I think there either was one there and it was taken away, or they wanted to put one, one in, but it hasn't happened. All right, and let's just work our way back out. There's one more thing to show you up here. So this space here, this landing area has a window over here. I've only opened up one of the shutters, but that gives you those lovely mountain views. And if you go through these big doors over here, it takes you onto another patio space. So there's a whole bunch of little patio areas and balconies and verandas and all sorts of things. And look at this one. I really do like the, this property. I'm, I'm super impressed by it. So metal railings along the side. It's in a triangular shape. Let me just stand back here so you can see what the house looks like. There's the other little balcony area. And then looking back out over the doors. And again, all of the shutters, really good condition. All the windows double glazed, the doors double glazed. Um, there's guttering going along the reef so you don't have any water splashing down and getting its way into the walls and up the walls. You know, I'm not seeing any damp or anything. The gutters are in really good condition. Um, there is gutters coming off here that go halfway onto this reef. But again, this reef just drops off the side there. It's not an issue for damp on the house or anything like that. And then we've got this nice big patio downstairs. Cool. So for the, um, well, for this main house, there's only one more section to show you. I probably should have shown you while I was downstairs. It's a really nice big storage area. Actually, while we're up here, let me just give you another little peek. This is going down into the living room area. And at the moment, it does seem quite dark. And I think that's because that shutter on that, that window is closed. Um, but I'm sure you, you can change that with, you know, maybe opening up that window a little bit more, pu putting stronger lighting in here putting stronger lighting in here. But it's very cozy. And then we work our way back. Let's have one more look at this big kitchen area. This is a huge area. Huh. And this is the last space I wanted to show you. So this is a um, basically a big garage. It's a big double garage that you could probably fit four cars in. I don't know, if you fit cars side by side, it would be quite limited, but you could definitely get three or four cars in lengthways, which is amazing. Um, it's all tiled off. The garage door isn't electric or anything like that, but it looks like it's on springs, so it'll be quite easy to open and close. And if we look over here, this is the water system. So they've got a pump over here that basically takes water from the well, and that pump will push the water into this, which is called a pressure vessel. It keeps it under pressure so that when you open up a tap somewhere, you've got water pressure and it's not just the speed of the water coming out of the water mine. And uh, these are all the manifolds to send water to different parts. I'm not sure what all those different parts are, but I'm guessing if you close this manifold, it'll pump water out to some taps outside or something like that. And obviously there's the gas bottle I was talking about earlier. So yeah, a very impressive space, this. Now also worth noting is that at the back of the house, um, the ground level is up there. So this entire wall is actually underground. And, you know, this, this building's been around for a long time. So I'm not noticing um, any major damp issues or anything like that. There is very small, um, very, very small, hardly noticeable little bits here where the paint's lifted, but the wall's not wet or anything like that. And that's very impressive because you know, if we consider that we're about two meters underneath the ground here and there's a water mine back there. So, you know, there is water in the earth here and this building is actually keeping it at bay. So that's pretty good. And then this is the final space over here, which they're using as a laundry, a space for the hot water cylinder and probably storage 
pantry space. Now this is un like underground again, so there's no windows or anything like that. And it is just a storage room, but let me just give you a view of this. And again, I'm just noticing very, very tiny bits of paint flaking, which is very, very impressive considering that this is underground. I'm not feeling any water on the actual wall itself though. Um, and it is the middle of winter, so we've had lots and lots of rain. So I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. All right, so let's work our way around. Um, there actually is more to show you before we go on to the proper outdoor stuff. There is a, an outdoor kitchen on the patio here, which I'll take you to, um, which is on this side. Hola, Ricardo. Hello. So this is uh, the agent Ricardo. <laughs> and we have an outdoor kitchen space, uh, like over here. So before you get there, you go up one step, and let's just show you on the front here. We've actually got another front door. So we have this as a front door space, or the other one which we came in earlier. And this is that other little window leading into the living room, the lounge. And over here is an outdoor kitchen. So we've got space to put all the wood, your plates, your food and everything. And this is all built in. We've got a nice barbecue area going all the way up the chimney and out so you don't get smoke on your patio area, which is a very nice touch. Okay, so the last thing I wanna I want show you of the actual building itself is the double garage. So you've got quite a few garages and this one is very, very impressive. As you can see, it's massive, absolutely massive. Plenty of space for storing all your equipment and things like that. Now I'm not sure, you might have to speak with the uh, agent about whether or not some, some of this equipment's included in the sale or if you can buy some of it. But obviously things like, like this are quite useful if you wanna start planting veggies and things like that. But yeah, a really nice big double garage um, little window on the side here, it's dry in here, I'm not seeing any water. So very, very impressive little space, really nice for a workshop, storage space, put the cars. Uh, it seems to be one light over here and we've got uh, four sockets over there and some kind of a circuit breaker. I'm not sure if this is for the whole house. I would assume that this is only for this uh, building and that there's probably other breakers that are in, like in the house itself. And then outside we've got this, um, this tap. So I think this is where one of those manifolds went. So it would go to, go to this tap. I noticed that there was another tap just on this side over there. And uh, yeah, I think there might be a couple of other hoses dotted around, but I haven't seen exactly where those are yet. Look at this. The olive trees are nice. They're a nice size, good shape, mature. As we walk our way around the outside, this is where we have this little patio space from the bedrooms. We can see that there's a uh, nice little storage area. This is probably a good place to put wood and things like that, to keep it nice and dry. You can see we're in the middle of winter. Look at this wood, bone dry. There's a circuit breaker over there, so I'm not sure if that's the big mains box. And let me give you a look of the house from this side. Oh, there's the chimney for that little outdoor barbecue area. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do is let's walk our way around here so you can see what this area looks like. This is uh, that other bedroom that has this other little patio space. I'm just gonna go up here and try and step back a bit so you can see a little bit better. Look at that, nice. And again, this is the old building, the old stone building, and then the other parts are new. All right, so it's very wet and muddy here. I'm gonna get some boots and then I'm gonna carry on this tour. All right, well, that's a bit better. I knew there's always a reason why I bring these boots with me. So this is all land. And as you can see, it's quite steep. You can see the house is here, the land goes up. So in terms of being usable, I'm not really sure. I'm going to try and see if I can get up here. I haven't actually been up here yet. I just want to point out, this is the limit. This is the border fence. And that works its way down past where the garages are, down to where the olive trees are on that bottom terrace. And then back up again, back up around the side. And then apparently, I think he said it's like a square at the back there. 
Right, so let's, um, <laughs> let's take a little hike and see what we can find. I thought this was going to be a path, but actually it looks like a channel that they've dug for water. Maybe, I'm not sure. I would guess they would rather have water channel through here than go down the back. And we've got something over here. What is this? I wonder if this is a well. It looks like an old well or something like that. Okay, it's not a well. Um, I'm not really sure what it is. They've got some kind of a some kind of a thing that they were grinding stuff in by the looks of it. And we've got some burnt logs in here. I'm really not sure what I'm looking at. This part is all natural. There seems to be like a gap in there. It's all full of brambles, so I can't get there now. But there's some kind of little cave in there. And then on the outside, we've got this sort of walled area. Now this might have been an old pig pen. I know they love their chorizo, they love their pork. Could be that they put some pigs in here. This was a little water bowl or a food trough and the stones were just big enough to keep them in. But that is just a wild guess on my part. I've seen a lot of these old properties over the years. A lot of the times structures like that are used for animals, so it could be a pig pen. Cool, so I'm walking up this little path. It actually does look like a path now. It doesn't look like a, a little river thing. And as you can see, it's quite level here. So you can walk along here, you can walk along there. Um, we can look back at the house. You can actually see, look at the state of the roof. So the roof looks like it's in pretty good condition. It's got like, you know, a bit of lichen growing on it. It's got a bit of moss growing on it. But I didn't see any leakage on the inside of the house. And, you know, apart from the moss and the lichen, the roof appears to be doing its job just fine. Right, so we continue up the path. Uh, I have no idea what I'm going to find here, so I'm kind of narrating this as I go along. But yeah, we've got lots of nice big granite rocks. A lot of caves. I'm, not, I'm noticing a little cave there, a little cave there. I think we should go and have a look at those. It is very steep, so I'm not sure if it's going to be quite slippery. But yeah, look at these rocks, all covered in moss. Some beautiful pine trees in between. Really nice. I'm not noticing any processionary caterpillars in the pine trees, which is a good thing. You know, I don't have any of those nests or those dangerous caterpillars. Well, I can't see any, so that's good. But yeah, let me see if I can get to these little cave structures. Now, in terms of like arable land, if you wanted, you know, you're, like you're looking at 1.6 hectares, but how much of it is actually usable? Um, as you can see, this is not sort of usable for growing crops or anything like that. But it is beautiful, especially if you're into mountain climbing and rocks and things like that. And if you want to get fit, walking up here is going to do the trick. Yeah, look at this. A nice little cave. Too small for a human to go underneath, but it's a cave nonetheless. And there appear to be loads of them dotted all about. Oh, it's so pretty. Now, now you can see the mountains a little bit better as the rain clouds are moving over. Wow. All right, let's soldier on a little bit more. I want to see if I can find the back um, sort of boundary or limit. I notice there's a burnt tree over here, but I don't see any other, it's like remnants of a burnt tree, but and remnants of a little bit of a burn, but all of the trees here seem fine. So it looks like there was a tree that burnt, but nothing else caught on fire. They, they are nicely spaced out, actually, if you look at their trees, and they don't have any branches low down. So if there are fires, the fires tend to not take so well when you you know, when you cut all of the branches like they have here. So I'm not sure if this was intentional or just because these, these trees are old, but uh, there's not much to burn on them. And as you can see, if the fire starts low, it doesn't really creep its way up as much. Oh, I'm getting out of breath. Wow, this is very interesting. I've never actually seen a property that has a little mountainous foresty section like this. This is very cool. We've got some nice wildlife on here as well. This is from a wild boar. A wild boar's come in here and it's been rooting around with its nose. And there won't just be one wild boar, there'll be like a family of them that'll come through here. You can see we've got more of it happening here. And a little nose print where his nose went in. How cool is that? Okay, so let me just walk you through here. And try and see if I can find the limits. 
seems to just keep going. I'm almost wondering if the back part of this is actually fenced off or if there isn't a fence and I'm just walking into the mountains. But it's beautiful. I would absolutely love to have some rocks and some nature like this. It's magnificent, look at this. Huh. Okay, so it seems to have flattened out a little bit here and I can see another building, which is just back there. And I'm not seeing any fence line. Uh, I have a feeling that the fences don't actually come all the way up because this is starting to look like someone else's property maybe. But we've walked quite a distance all the way up here and there's still quite a distance to go with all of these rocks back here. So I think what would be a good idea is to find out from the agent if he can actually send you a map of the boundaries or the limits because obviously I've just arrived here and uh, you know I've had to ask him these questions but he hasn't actually walked up here and pointed out where these limits are and he wasn't able to show me a map or anything while we were talking so I think you should try and see if you can get a map of it and see exactly what you could own but yeah it's a very 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 nice bit of land it just depends on what you want it for because obviously all of these rocks here and how steep it is makes it quite difficult to get up and down but I mean it is stunning and you really feel as if you're up in the mountains here now there is one thing I wanted to point out I was saying there were no processionary caterpillars that's a nest over there now don't worry too much because it's very very normal to have those they're all over Portugal but they're a dangerous kind of caterpillar the hairs of the caterpillar are very dangerous for your pets and animals so if you do buy a property like this and you see that you must be very very careful but chop it off and burn it and if you're not confident in doing that I think you can phone the authorities because they can kill your pets and they can also harm you but having said that that's not a fault with this particular property because you know it's like that all over Portugal where like wherever you see these types of pine trees you're going to find processionary caterpillar nests it's normal so yeah now I'm not going to hike all the way up to this top point because well it's insanely long and I don't even know if we're still on the property uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that all of this going down is part of the property but I'm just not sure how much further back it goes uh, but there is stuff that I need to show you down on the bottom of the property there because there's actually still more things going on so I'm going to fast forward this climb down and I'll start you at that bottom section so we just walked all the way down around back through the patio area here and I wanted to point out they have this little outdoor sort of laundry area this is like an old an old-fashioned one which is quite cute and this is another one of these taps that they have outside that you can see you can move um, and this is all connected to the pipe work and the water work and stuff in there um, which is obviously connected to the water mine now before we go further I wanted to just show you what this back wall looks like we've got this sort of it's like granite it's like granite and sand and granite but it seems to be quite stable I'm not seeing uh, much motion in it I mean obviously this building's been here for, for a long time and I haven't really seen any um, areas of slide or slip I mean there is this little bit over here which looks like it came down a bit um, but yeah I don't really see anything that I feel is going to impact the house too badly if stuff falls down there it'll just land on top and yeah this is the area that's underground so as you see in the um, you know in this barn if you go to that back room you're kind of underground there and that's what I was talking about how there's obviously some good drainage system in here look this looks like some kind of a French drain system or something to take the water away and they probably have some kind of a dam course running through there because the house is quite dry inside but yeah I mean this obviously is a big wall a big mound it's your wall so you can do stuff with it um, but yeah it seems to be quite secure apart from this little bit of drop all right now that we're down here I've got something very interesting to show you uh, leading on from the water mine there's pipe work that takes you to a big water tank and it's very very nice now this is an agricultural water tank it's basically for uh, storing water but you can also see that it could be used to have a dip in summer which is pretty awesome so this is the, the tank over here as you can see we've got this pipe that comes from the water mine and it's basically putting fresh spring water constantly into this nice big tank that looks like it's about I don't know eight or ten meters long probably four meters wide and apparently it's about one and a half meters deep when I asked the agent he said you know about one uh, you know, like about one and a half but he doesn't know exactly 
And then on the other side of this tank, we've got an overflow. So it just permanently flows in, permanently flows out. So you've got a natural pool that you don't need to use any chemicals or anything like that. And you shouldn't get any problems with stagnant water or anything like that because there's constantly fresh water coming in. Absolutely amazing. It would be perfect to put fish in here actually because, you know, although I'm not sure if you could because you've got this going into a, a waterway and you might get eggs. Maybe don't put fish in there. But anyway, for swimming, th this will be awesome. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, flows down here and into this little ravine and down the mountain. Yeah, that's quite special. I know our tank is probably about four or five times smaller than this. And we've got about six and a half thousand liters. So this is a pretty big tank. And as I said in the beginning of the video, there's actually a part where you can send this water into the lower terraces where you can grow crops and you can water trees and things like that. And speaking of trees, we have cherry tree over here. We have a loquat tree, which they call Nespereira. We've got a couple of loquat trees. Um, these are fruit trees. I'm not sure exactly what type of fruit because they've got nothing on them yet. Could be, could be cherry. I'm not entirely sure. Could be peach. Um, and then we've got a whole bunch more. So this looks like a, I would probably say that that's an apricot tree or something like that. We've got some more nespereras. We've got some more olive trees on this top terrace. And this is actually quite a, quite a nice big flat area. And there's Gina in the car. She's waving. Hello, Gina. So it's a nice big flat area, obviously, for parking and stuff like that, and also parking on the side. Oh, look at this. We've got some drainage going down this side. We've also got drainage going down this side. So it's quite nicely mapped out and thought out. And let me take you down and show you those bottom terraces. Another little drain going across the bottom of the driveway here. Now, as I said before, this area here is mud, so they haven't actually cemented or done anything with that. It only becomes mud on this last strip. So um, it has actually got some kind of paving over there, just up to that point. But obviously it's been working totally fine. Uh, this is that terrace. I haven't actually walked around in here, so this will be my first time. Nice big olive trees. What was that? There's a, there's a farmer in the distance there yelling at his sheep. <laughs> I recognize those sounds. So yeah, let's have a look. We've got some nice big olive trees. They seem quite mature. They do need a prune, um, but I mean, it's not like at emergency levels yet, but in the next year or two, you definitely want to give them a prune, get their shape back before they turn into a complete bush. Um, this is the black irrigation hose. Remember earlier when we first came in, underneath the water tank there is the manifold to open up and you can send water down here. And we've got nice flat areas here where between the olive trees you can plant like all your vegetables and stuff like that. It'll keep it nice and shaded from the harsh summer sun um, and also be nice for the olive trees. And then we have this other little terrace down here, which is, well again, exactly the, like the same. So there's quite a, a nice amount of space, definitely enough space here for you to grow all of your own food. Um, but we don't have nice big flat areas of land for, for livestock and things like that, you know. That's the one thing that you are sort of missing with this type of land. Now, I believe what he was saying is it goes up to the end here. Let me just walk down there, take you to that very point. And I'm guessing it's going to be in line with these old boundary stones. And we've got stones going along there. So um, we're actually looking back in the direction the house is over there. And it kind of goes up and around and down along here. And this is going to be your little sort of private driveway. But this paved part of the road here, the road with the calzadas, is probably, probably public up to that point. Now I'm having to make quite a few assumptions here when it comes to the land and the boundaries, because again, I haven't actually seen them, but I've heard that it is 1.6 hectares. I'm kind of going on my knowledge of what that looks like. Um, I'm unsure as to what this little bit of land is over here, because potentially this could be yours as well, but I'm not entirely sure. So looking across from where the from where the olives are, well, there's this little terrace here that has a pool. Now, I'm sure if it was your land, I'm sure the agent would have told me, hey, look, it's got a pool, and he didn't, so. But I'm not sure if the next terrace belongs to the property, because that's where the fence starts that goes all the way up. So this is something that will have to be clarified. You definitely want to get topographic map showing the boundaries and things like that. 
here's actually a little, a little pond that's fed from the overflow from your water tank. Well, that concludes the tour. I think I've shown everything that this property has to offer. I must say I'm very, very impressed with it. Um, it's, a, it's an immense house. It's a huge house, four bedrooms, really nice big size rooms, um, no damp, which is quite unusual in Portugal. And trust me, right now, this time of year, we would see the damp. Um, it's got loads of potential, but it also has lots and lots of climbing and hills and things like that. And if you want to get around the property, you're going to be doing a lot of climbing. Now, for some people that might not be too much of an issue, but for some people that might you know, be a complete deal breaker. If you're just dealing with the immediate area around the house, it's all nice and flat and very manageable. But if you do want to access these lower terraces, you're going to have to do a little bit of climbing there. And also, if you want to access this part to the back of the house, you're going to have to do some climbing there. But saying all that, I think for an asking price of 185,000 euros, this re like represents really, really good value. And uh, you know, for people, like if this video actually does go onto YouTube, um, you know, for people watching at home, I'm not an agent. I don't sell properties. I only do these video tours. So um, you know, I'm not earning any money if this property sells. I'm not trying to sell a property to Mike. Uh, he's actually just hired me so that I can have a walk around and I can point out things for him and show him if there are any issues with the property. Um, and yeah. I'm very, very, very impressed. All right, so we've just been flying around the drone. I managed to get two shots in with the drone, but unfortunately it's raining. I mean, look at this, you can see the cars. I think you can see on the car a bit better that it's proper raining. Uh, so yeah, I can't send my drone up. It's gonna break if I try and fly in this weather and crash somewhere. So yeah, sorry about that. But hopefully the tour is gonna have shown you everything that you needed to see.